and start making some noise again. Got all my holes drilled out last night. Just got a couple more to drill in this space and then try and split it with a chisel bit. And hopefully it'll just come out in big chunks. The hold is going through a cycle of, uh, of wrecked and then clean and then wrecked and clean. <laughs> Hauling off rubbish every night. We've probably taken quite a bit of weight and wet wooden foam off the boat over the last few nights. It's looking good. Pretty excited to get all the demo knocked out start working toward rebuilding the the stringers get laminating again so yeah just more of the same today we'll get going on this that's got grinding in his future <laughs> I think he's pretty excited about it yeah <laughs> love grinding <laughs> Well, you don't have to think about what you're doing. Yeah, that's it's kind true. Of a mindless task. Yeah, just get down and dirty, and dusty. Yeah. Well, I got a little bit done yesterday, uh, cleaning up fast, so should be pretty easy. Got a little prep to do on these walls back here and get those cleaned up beforehand. While I got some working room and everything, and uh, I'll do that aft bulkhead and then also the forward one get those cleaned up because we'll be going in there and putting a new layer of uh laminate in there too and tie it into the new stringers so um yeah all in all it looks pretty good though shouldn't take too long to get this all cleaned up get get this glass prepped and then we'll give it a good scrub and and then uh a wipe down with some acetone before we start putting our our new um, stringer in. I have to scrounge up some some planks. I think maybe we'll grab one of the boards off this crate our shaft came in and and use that to staple some cardboard too. And then we can uh, make a good template. It's got some angle cuts on here. Really going to want to maximize our materials on this. We're thinking that we might be able to get, well, it's gonna be two layers, and so we might be able to get um, like a front piece and then the aft piece on the other side out of the same panel. Just give them an angle cut, and then we can kind of maximize that foam, and we're not wasting too much that way. So hopefully it works out. Um, gotta get some measurements and see, but pretty sure it will. Yeah. And then we don't have a bunch of a bunch of waste, a bunch of weird off cuts and everything. We shall see. Mm -hmm. Don't know yet. Yeah, I'll show you guys. So back here the the taper of the hole is a lot more significant. This is a flat, fairly flat uh, plumb plane that I'm holding you at. Compared to up here toward the bow. It's a uh, Quite a bit less. Yeah, and also the floor of the fish hole tapers a lot. Um, yeah. Even from where this aft bulk is, aft bulkhead is to where it is forward. So I think yeah. that we can get that kind of wedge shape. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell there that depth versus that depth. It's gonna take like two panels for for that anyway so we're hoping that we can take that off cut and then reverse it to the other side and use it back here that'd be uh that'd be good that'd be nice for sure and we're not wasting too much material or just have a, a bunch of weird shapes like that all right guys well i'll get the rest of my gear on my little stash over here my respirator and glasses and Hearing protection. Get rolling here.
So we're down here in the engine room. Um, I'll show you what we're doing today. So here we've got the coupler, which was for the uh, original intermediate shaft. Shaft. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see it. But what we're doing is we're trying to figure out a true center line where the shaft would be. So um, as you can see, Dad rigged up a string here, which would indicate like the top of the shaft going back. But it's it's a little difficult to determine if it's true center or not because if this turns just a little bit, it'll throw it off. So. Uh, what we've got here is a plug of a 2x4 cut out with a hole saw. So the middle hole is uh, true to the outside. And what we're going to do is stick the string through it. And that'll act as the center of the shaft. Stick this plug in the hole like that. And yeah, it'll indicate the center of the shaft that way. We'll just stick that string through there and tie a good knot on it so it doesn't pull through. And then we can stick this plug in here. You can see it's a little small. So I brought some tape along to, to make it bigger. Be good. There you go, buddy. Thank you. All right, we'll go get a look outside and get a full explanation of what we're doing here. So this was Dad's first iteration on his string line here. Um, like I was saying, in the in the engine room, came off the top of the shaft, going to the top of the uh, coupling in there, and just a little bit of variation can throw off the angle of the string line that way. So yep, you can see the difference, the uh, inch over. So kind of thought about it a little bit. And uh, this be a better way to line it up and make sure that it's lined up. One of the things I was looking to accomplish here, and that's why I ran it off the top, was just checking the clearance to, from the top of the shaft to the bottom of the shaft alley covers, uh, which will be right here. But then I also wanted to make sure that, that uh, our new stringers are somewhat parallel to the shaft and each other so I'm just trying I mean it's not that big of an issue but I kind of want things to be somewhat square yeah and uh, and definitely the heights matched yeah just make it easier to make measurements and stuff later so yeah it'll be okay how that one fit over there pretty good good did you have to put much tape on it uh three or four wraps I think mm -hmm. Okay, just use black tape then. I will. So there may be a more technical way to do this, I'm sure, but using what's within our our reach here. <laughs> Not looking to make it a drawn out process or anything. Not like so oh. scientific, right? If we had a lathe, we'd just make a nice little sleeve and yeah. that would be that, but Okay, so this will give us a nice accurate uh, measurement right off of there. So we just have a loop on the other end so we can untie this and get it out of our, out of our way. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tight. I'm trim some of this extra off of here. So 
So I think that's going to be our best bet is to take another piece of angle just like this. We'll do something similar. We'll just screw a little block into the bulkhead over there and clamp it to that. And we'll get it laid out over here. We'll get it trued up, plumbed up as best we can. Um, there's really no easy way to go about this. Just going to have to kind of eyeball it and hope it comes out relatively straight. And um, yeah, so a little bit of fiddling around here. This will take a little bit. Yeah, it's um, been a fiddly few days. Yeah. But that's what it takes. Like parts takes that go fast, too. like what you're doing, it's just kind of like, you know, just hammer away. But then there's other parts of it that can be somewhat slow and time consuming. And templating stuff is always exactly that. It's kind of. We are just getting this laid out down here in the fish hold, so give you a little shot from up above. Just got two pieces of uh, two and a quarter angle aluminum right there. Um, don't really know how well it's coming out, but I have them positioned in there where the uh, stringer wall will be, so that's the inside surface right there. See, we have everything all measured out and about as even and as plumb and straight as we can get it, I suppose. So I'm just kind of going with it. Kind of a tough thing to do. <clears throat> but we can kind of see where it, uh, it lines up with the old one and it looks like it's pretty close. The little stringer was right here, coming down. Um, Add some marks that we had made beforehand just through the straight edge on it and transfer the line up onto the side of the bulkhead wall. Did the same thing back there and uh, it's straight. It looks good. It looks like everything's in line. Uh, let's see, we had our, our line coming off the center of the shaft going forward to the reduction gear, same thing. Um, we measured in from that, and it's uh, it's parallel to the shaft. And then we also measured up from the line this way to our aluminum, and that measurement was equal on both ends. So I'm happy that it's pretty straight. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's it's in. Uh, it's flat in relation to the shaft right there. We're just gonna do this side right here. And then when we're finished, we'll just take that, that overall length from the top of the uh, shaft alley stringer to the bottom of the hull. We'll match it over there and it should be fairly, fairly flat, fairly level, I guess is the word that we're looking for. We're just doing the best that we can. We're going off of what we had there before and I'm happy with it. Uh, one nice thing about using flat surfaces like this is that you can eyeball down them and you can see if they're straight in line with each other and they're very, very accurate. Uh, next thing I did was I just put a mark every couple of inches and now I can just take my tape measure and I can square it off of that line and measure down to the bottom and then I'll get this dimension uh, right here. And I'll get that dimension right there. And I'm going to do that every two inches. And I'm going to record that. And then we will take those marks and we will transfer them to our piece of foam. Uh, so we could have just done a cardboard template like we did up there. But it's kind of hard. It's a long shot here. And with the cardboard being ripply and you know trying to attach it to this. Aluminum this way is going to be just as accurate this This top plane right here is flat and so I'm just going to go right off my foam board with that I'll just do the same thing. I'll just measure down every two inches And then I'll transfer this mark down to the bottom. I'll put a little dot there and then we will Line up all those dots. We'll connect them all and we will cut it out and that's that um, this is two and a half inch, which is actually pretty convenient because our two layers of foam with the fiberglass on them is about two and a half inches also. 
So that's gonna make it pretty easy just to come off the back side of this. I'll just use a T-square and I'll use uh, my long, uh, I'll use my long square to measure off the back side of that and get that dimension. So I can kind of kill two birds at once uh, with one stone here because as you can see this this hole's got quite a bit of angle to it and so I can't just cut those two pieces the same or they won't match. So that's going to get me where I need to go and I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna start getting this measured up and uh, writing all these numbers down. This is kind of like our template and we just marked it every two inches on here. We're taking a measurement, dropping it straight down. Um, we're just going at a 90 degree off the top of this rail. And when we lay it out on our panel, we'll just do the same thing, it's nice and straight. So it'll be really easy to measure that same thing down. It looks like we're uh, shrinking by about an eighth of an inch every two inches on this. So far, I think it'll get a little more severe once we get back here. It really start to go up fast, but uh, um, we're about halfway through here. This is a length of one fiberglass foam panel right here, about 86 inches from the forward bulkhead. I'll have to make a few mark more marks going back. We'll stop where our aft bulkhead is going to be in the main fish hole here. Yeah, so I'm basically I'm just using uh, just a, a square here, and because of the slope of the fish hole, I'm just resting this forward point on on the hull, and then I can look up and I get my measurement up here off the bottom of this rail, and I just advance it, or in this case I go half two inches and measure again yep and uh and then the bottom of it i'm just resting it against this other rail and that way i know that i'm not like all crooked and these are lined up mm -hmm. um, then you got your t-square for that other yeah, squaring it you might have lined up nice and straight when we got this all set up and mm -hmm. and uh yeah this other t-square is just making it i did put marks straight marks on here it just makes it a little bit easier yeah so i just came out three inches from the bulkhead there and started there and that'll be close enough down here and uh, then just every two inches is a mark
The project continues. Uh, we spent probably the last couple days just kind of doing a few slow things. Um, that's been lining out this uh, this template um, jig he has going on here. We got the Ford one piece of the uh, of the stringer there cut and fit, and it looked pretty good. And so we migrated this uh, template jig back, and that's. Up next, probably tomorrow. Yeah, um, we'll just do the same thing up here. Just measure down um, every. We have them marked every two inches. Just measure down, gets a a pretty fair line, and uh, and then we'll transfer that onto our laminated foam panel and cut it out. Yeah, first one turned out good. We just kind of estimated the angle and ripped it, and uh, it came out real close. That angle will give us enough for the other side to use that same piece. We shouldn't have any wasted really at all. I'm just kind of trying to maximize that material and we'll do that uh, with the rest of these. So like Matt said, he's just kind of been getting this concrete cleaned up and I was working on that. Um, we laminated up a, a panel yesterday, do another one this evening before we leave, I guess. And then we'll have those ready to go and we can cut them in the morning. Yeah, and that should be all of the panels we need for our stringers. So start getting those back in or uh, fit in the way we want them. Yeah, That'll we got exciting. a little bit of ways to go, but the big thing is just to get the rest of this concrete cleaned up. It's going to work out pretty good. It's good to see what's actually down inside here. and. Kind of like with the fishtail, we'll know this uh, vessel inside out when we're done with it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm glad we delved in down surprises here. surprises down here, so. Yep. Looking towards the back, it looks like we got a little bit of work to do back in here. Not quite sure what we got going on yet. So, it's obvious that all of this stuff has been moved before. Um, I think these stringers were put in at some point. The original, the original ones were removed, concrete was added. This has definitely been changed before. Uh, as evidenced in the front one, that packing gland had been moved several times. Um, there's about three or four different sets of holes there. I'm guessing the same thing back here because you got some filler going on in here. <clears throat> you got some gel coat underneath this layer of glass. So these are clues that Somebody's been in here and been fiddling around with this before. That and the fact that that's also quite crooked, which is kind of a trigger point for me because, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's just annoying that it's crooked. Yeah. It, it, it's not that it, it makes any difference or anything, but yeah, you know, it's like a picture hanging on your wall that's crooked. It annoys you. So we'll get that all sorted out here as we go along. Uh, got some cleanup to do back in here, get this degreased real good, and then uh, I'm not really sure how we're going to address this problem. Most likely when we go on the grid, we're going to pull this shaft out and, uh, and plug the outside. And we'll just let the, the tide come in. Uh, I got a short piece of shaft from up forward. We'll remove this one, we'll put that short piece in here tighten up this packing box so we don't have to worry about it leaking. Let the tide come in and uh, we'll loosen these up. And if water gushes out of it, then we know that our plug is leaking where the, where the shaft enters uh, the shaft log, which is the fiberglass tube that goes back. And uh, we'll just tighten it back up and leave it. And uh, and if not, if we don't have any water leaking, then we can 
disassemble this and figure out exactly what to do. I think most likely we'll just be coming in here and laying up a, about three quarter inch uh, a laminate and, uh, and, and remounting this. It's gonna need a little bit of cleanup. So it's either gonna happen here in our stall or it's gonna happen on the hard.